God for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure to be in the house of God. Because when I was in need, he was there for me. And I want to be the same way for him. I want to be in his house of God for what he has done. I know that I can never repay for what he, God has done for me, for my family. But I want to try to serve him the best way I can with your prayers to help me to go to great line. And I thank God for Mr. Bassan and his wife here at the team. God bless you. Yes. And uh, and just pray for me that when my wife goes, I won't eat too much weight. <laughs> uh, this song I've been trying to sing it for quite a while. And the other day I, I was doing some work and stuff like that. And I, I remember what Brother Heider said one day. If you're gonna say that you love the Lord and you're a Christian, be a Christian, love the Lord. But if you're just gonna say that you love the Lord just so, so people can hear you say it, don't say it, that's gonna go against you when God comes. Because he was, he's going to tell you, you tell me you love me, but you don't love me. But I don't want God to ever tell me that to me. Right. And it's nice to hear the word because that word, when, it, when he speaks it from God, it's for us. So we can grow and get ahead. Because a lot of things have been happening on this world. Accident, building falling down, and everything else. God said, you're going to see things that you have never seen before. Because I'm coming. And he's going to come, like Mikey said. He's going to come like the thief of the night. You never know when you're going to be there. So be prepared. And this out, this song that I'm going to sing is for the honor and glory of God. And just to thank him for what he has done.
I did a little muscle moving that <laughs> Well, it tells us about rain in the Bible several times. And we've been having the rain. So this is one of them, beyond the rain.
There's power in the blood. Let's all stand. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, <clears throat> against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. All right, we'll stop right there for, for right now. Maybe we'll read some others in a, in a while, but <clears throat> excuse me. God has provided everything. Yes. Uh, but we're the problem. Uh, yeah, I remind me of the story, you know, that the Lord was telling about a, a vineyard, about a crop that was planted. And he said, the fields now are wiped to harvest. In other words, the crops have come in, uh, you know, and uh, they're ready to be harvested. But as he looked out over the field, and I'm sure he, he had some of his disciples and some of the people that are with him, and I'm sure he used that to try to get their attention. Now look out there and see that crop. It's ready to harvest, but work is the laborers. I, I see no laborers. I see no work going on. And Jesus said, but where are the laborers of the field? Uh, you know, this uh, Jesus, he, he owns the field. He planted the crop. It grew. And now it's ready to be harvested, but he can't find anyone to harvest it. Now, I want to say this to us, you and I today. We've let God down. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I apologize, God, that we, as Christians, have let God down. Mm -hmm. You know, this world today is so full of arrogance and it's so full of hatred. It's so full of everything that's ungodly today. And you know what? It's rubbed off on the Christian. Yep. We've come to a place to where God's people are full of arrogance. We're full of everything else but Jesus. That's right. We need to realize what's happening today in our life. You know, the Bible says here, Jesus said, now you see what's going on here. He said, but finally now, he said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. I'll tell you right now, there ain't nobody going to be strong in the Lord for you but you. Amen. Brother, your brothers and sisters in Christ cannot be strong in the Lord for you. No. You and I have to do this ourselves. Right. And we have to build our life as a Christian by the leadership of the Spirit of God. He says that uh, put on and the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God. Now there is where we have failed God. We have failed God, we have failed ourselves, and we have failed fe uh, a fellow man because we haven't put on the whole armor of God. People said, you know what? I know there's some people sick. There's some people gone away. But brother, there's some people that should have been here this morning, but they ain't got enough of God's armor. They ain't got enough faith. They ain't got enough need in God. We don't need God anymore. Did you know that? I'll tell you right now, we need God. If, if God has blessed us with every material thing in the world, you still need God. I need God, praise God, to be up here this morning. 
morning, God has provided. But the problem is over here, he said, and above all, taking a stand in faith. You know, if the devil had his way, none of us would have come here this morning. Uh, you know, the devil will say to you, what's the use going? Nobody comes. Nobody gets the title. Nobody this. Nobody that. Pray God, listen to me. I'm going to come here every Sunday morning, and I'm going to preach. I'm going to rejoice. I don't care if there ain't nobody here. Brother, I'm coming to worship God. And I'm lift up the name of Jesus. Because, listen, I trusted him when I called out to be saved. And God saved me. He had blessed me. He had lifted me up from brother anything short of heaven. God had blessed me. Amen.
but he's way off out there somewhere. Oh, this way off out there. I'm telling you, he's not way off out there. When you give your heart and your life to Jesus, and if you got it right the first time, and he was convicted and drawn to the Savior, and he forgave you of your sin, he said, my spirit I give unto you. You received the spirit of Jesus. Don't tell me Christians ain't missing. We've been blessed. We received the spirit of Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus is here if you brought him in. Yep. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He was in bell. I didn't feel nothing. I did awful dry this morning. You know why? You came in dry and you went out drier. You got to bring something with you. Jesus said, bring me something. Bring me something that I'll accept. And then I'll let you worship me. Yeah, we just walk in, sit ourselves down, and say, now bless me, Lord, if you can. Mm. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, you bring me, bring me an offering that I'll accept. And when I accept it, I'll bless you. You know, you got to bring something to the Lord. you got to bring something. But we get got to get our hearts right, get our faith right. Brothers and sisters, no wonder people are not getting saved today. They ain't got anyone to pattern their lives after. You know? All this foolishness on Facebook. I tell you, if them preachers keeps it up, I'm going to. Listen, it's time for the free will Baptist preachers to get out of Facebook and get in this book mm -hmm. and talk about Jesus. Yep. Yep. Amen. And not all of this other foolishness. It's time to talk about Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to be what God saved us to be, and that is to be Christians, to go out and to, you know, he didn't tell them disciples that day when they was up in the loft and man, the Holy Spirit came in and it filled the whole place and it got on the <coughs> up. And brother, when they went out of there, he didn't say go and talk and put this junk on Facebook. He said go and preach the gospel. Preach it to every creature. Tell them about me. Tell them who I am. Uh-huh. We failed you, God. Says praying always with prayer and supplications in the spirit. If you pray and you're, you're not praying it in the spirit, don't waste your breath. Right. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that others may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, there is stuff in here that the world needs to know. They need to know it, they need to hear it. But you know what? You and I don't get close enough for God to God for God to reveal it to us, for God to show us that is full of mystery. It is absolutely full of mystery. And I'll tell you, the world cannot understand it. Most people, if you haven't read it, you can't understand it. But it's full of mystery. And God will open it up to you if you and I will just get down and read it in the Spirit of God. Yep. Read it. And believe in every word of it. Well, I'll read it, but I don't know if I can believe all of that. Mm. There's an engineer one time, he come back into my office, he kicked back in the chair. He said, Preacher, you don't believe every word in that Bible, do you? I said, Every word, brother, from the front to the back. Well, he said, I'm just a laid back Presbyterian. I said, Yeah, you're going to get up one of these days, too. Brother, let me tell you something. Every word in this book is God. Exactly. It's God's word. Yes. Yep. Brother, it's not just something somebody sat down one time and they didn't have nothing else to do. That's how we worship God. We come to church when we ain't got nothing else to do. 
We worship God when we ain't got anything else to do. You know? Above all, taking the shield of faith for which he shall be able to, to quench, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And I'll tell you right now, buddy, when he throws them, he don't miss. You've got to have something to <coughs> reflect and keep them out of, out of your life. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Protect your mind, brothers and sisters. We've got to protect our mind. Because the devil is going to mess with it. And all he'll come, well, they're doing it, so it must be okay. You can do it. You can go there. It's okay. Some of them go there. Yeah, they will. But I'll tell you what, if, you, if you've got that head protected, that mind protected, I'll tell you right now, he's going to tell you right quick through the leadership of the Spirit. No, he don't make any difference if they're doing it. You can't do it. Well, you had to make me an oddball. Well, listen, the Bible says that we are a peculiar people, so it's okay. It's okay to be an oddball because Jesus said it's okay. You're a peculiar people. Well, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Oh, listen. Brothers and sisters, it's important to put on the whole armor of God. Well, I, I, I do this. I do that. You got to do it all. If God says all is necessary, you got to do it. But you see, getting back to people and the arrogance and the hatefulness of this, this is the most arrogant, hateful world I ever seen. Mm. You know? Jesus, I sat there and I think about. He said, look, take a look at the fields. They're white. They're ready to be harvested. And it took me back as a, as a child, as a young. You know. We used to get out there and we'd work them fields and we'd hold, you know. And we'd hold them and hold them rows. And sometimes it'd take you a half hour, 45 minutes, or whatever, to get down one row. So we'd take two at a time. We spread out as we went along. We talked. You know, we communicate. The problem is, they Christians don't communicate. You know, I don't. I don't care if that no there. I don't care if this not. Man, don't you ever, don't you ever call me and let me know. Well, I'm upset at somebody because I'll tell you exactly what I think about it. Listen to me. We walked them fields and working. We communicated. We talked. We laughed. We did all. You know, necessary. It was necessary to do it. Brothers and sisters today, nobody can get along. You know? First of all, they say, well, I ain't holding no corn. Well, I'll tell you what, if you grow up, I grow up, you'd hold corn. And anything else that you could have uh -huh. done, you know, because it was necessary. Jesus said, the fields are white to harvest, but there's no labor. It was necessary. Those fields that were white to harvest was the lost people of this world. And he said, I need somebody to go out there and harvest them. In other words, go to them, persuade them, talk to them, try to get them to come. He said, bring them in to the barns. But it's hard to get anybody today to talk about Jesus. Talk about it. We need to talk about it. We can't say to the Lord, well, Lord, I uh, I didn't know. I didn't have the means. I didn't this. I didn't that. <clears throat> God has provided everything. Yeah. 
He's left nothing out. There is no surprises to God. There's no surprises to God. He knows exactly who we are right now, right at this moment. He knows exactly every aspect of our life. He knows everything. There is no surprises to God. So, you can't hide nothing from God. You know? How could I even think about hiding something from God? I couldn't hide nothing from my mama. And so I know I can't hide nothing from God. You know? She finds it out one way or the other. And I won't tell you what, it don't take God as long as it did to mama. He knows it. He knows it. He knows right now whether or not you've got the whole armor of God on. He knows exactly where you stand in your faith. He knows whether you have the helmet of salvation. If you, you know, brothers and sisters, if, if you can forget a lot of things that may be in your lifetime, but don't you forget about Calvary. Don't you forget about the nails that were drawn in hands. Don't you forget about the blood that was shed at Calvary. Don't you forget about a Savior that the grave couldn't hold. He got up. He come forth. He ascended to heaven. He's alive and well. And he's on the right hand of God. And he's coming back again. Don't you ever forget. Don't you ever? You know, there's a lot of things in life we forget. Some things, man, we ought to forget. But the devil won't let you. But don't ever forget about Jesus. Don't ignore him. Always have him in the forefront. Always have him there. Lingering on your mind. Thinking about him. He's coming again. As they sung the song this morning, I'm telling you, heaven's going to be a great and glorious and wonderful place. If you get there, you won't have to worry about nothing. You can just check out the whole of the promised land. And brother, it's going to take you for eternity to do. Check it all out. I was in somewhere I was coming out to do something the other day. And I thought about it. Man, you know, I've liked it. I've explored some places and checked some things out. But I thought, man, won't it be wonderful to explore the promised land? Mm. Just go out there and see what God is making. Can you imagine that? Look what he's made here. But this ain't going to be nothing compared to what he's made for them that love for them that have served him, for them that is looking for him to come. It's a grand and glorious place. And I want to explore it. Because uh, we've all got loved ones that are gone on. You know? And uh, I know some says, well, they're looking for me to come. No, they're not. They're not looking for you to come. Matter of fact, right now, they don't know you exist. How could they worry about what's going on in our lives? It would be a heavenly place, wouldn't it? All you have right now is now and God. That's all we have. That's all we have. Because listen, as Brother Mike said the other day, man, I tell you what, you don't know from one moment to the next whether you're going to be here or not. You ever thought about, I, I'll hush you this morning. Have you ever thought about dying? Huh? Thought about dying? I'm sure you have, I'm, I'm sure you have. Thought about dying. Son, when you die, you are dead. You are, there is no more nothing but you and God. That 
that's it. For God, there ain't no more coming back. There ain't no more second change, man. I'm going to tell you what. God's already gave us all the second, third, and fourth, and fifth change. He gave me a dozen of them. But when we take that last breath, it's done. It's done. We need to, we need to make sure where we're at right now. Say, God, I'll just say this to us. I challenge us all. Just say, God, I'm sorry. God, I apologize for being the servant that I am. And God, I want to be a better servant, a better Christian, a better prayer. I want to have a a better faith. I want all that is necessary and that I can have in my life, Lord, that I can be who you want me to be. And that I can be ready. I'll just add this and then see you come. I I want to know if he comes right now. I mean now. Would you be ready? Would you be ready or not? And if, it, and if the thoughts over your heart and mind, I, I don't know. You best, you best know. You best know. Okay? Have a stand.